Well, hello, hello. It's live from the drive. Wednesday afternoon, evening, 6 p.m., 210 freeway, leaving Monrovia. I'm going uh, five miles per hour. Gonna probably have 60 miles to go. So I'm gonna get to I'm gonna get home about the time I'll have to turn around and come back to work. That's how long it's gonna take to drive home in this traffic. Um so some things on my list to talk about is it's an interesting thing. So in the past I would be afraid to post things on social media, talk about things, post a bunch, do things. So I'd be like, wait, what are what would people think? What would people say? What would they they do? And um I'd be like, I'm not gonna do it. Because people are going to say some stuff. Or if somebody did say something, because there's always somebody that says something, then I would get regret that I posted something and I'd delete it. And then maybe I'd be uh, regretful of past posts too and be like, oh man, why did I post a bunch of shit that nobody cares about? I'm just kind of embarrassing myself. But not this time. This time I don't give a shit. And I heard some people talking about asking questions about what I was doing, making moves stuff like that, like, you know, and at first I was kind of irritated, but second is I'm not because, you know, when people are paying attention and noticing what you're doing, you know, that's okay. Cause, cause you look at people, if you want to do more, achieve more, get more, whatever it is, and you put in the effort, the work, the hard work to do it, um, and, and you see other people do that. Like, the thing I always saw is I saw people, other people do it. And then they'd, they'd become good at whatever it was they were doing. Getting in shape or chasing businesses, building a business, their career, school, training. And, uh, and you'd be excited for them. And then, like, after, like, a while doing it, you're like, well, of course they were successful. They, like, really put their minds and efforts into it. And they didn't give up. And... I was thinking, you know, that that was me giving up because I'd be worried about what other people thinking. So you don't have to give up because other people are talking about it. Um, and I'm kind of losing my train of thought a little bit. But when you have people kind of talking about it in, in maybe a negative light or asking what you're doing, that's a good thing because that means you're doing something that people are at least curious about what you're doing and maybe even a little bit jealous of it. And you don't have to sit back and wonder like, oh, if you're doing, if somebody's out there doing something um, to make themselves better in life, um, that they're, you know, trying to disrupt their whole world or whatever. And it kind of leads me to my comment of my notes. My notes called making moves. And what I mean by that is, just because you're making moves in your life, like for me, posting a bunch of stuff on social media, talking about a podcast, which is coming out soon, except for I'm kind of a rookie at figuring out how to launch it. So there's some st- stuff I got to figure out tomorrow, maybe tonight, I'll try to do it tonight. Um, anyways, just because you're making moves doesn't mean you're like setting yourself up to like switch your life around. Um, so that's kind of my take on that, which leads me to this thing. Does anybody watch, like, follow the law of attraction? Like, remember that the, that book, The Secret? The movie came out, The Secret. Like, if you, if you think about it, you can make it happen. You can will it to happen. Um, so I, I kind of relate to that. But I don't relate to the fact of, like, hey, I can visualize, um, you know, hundred dollar bill land in my lap right now and boom there it is but what I think it does is when you put yourself in a position to think about what you can make you can make things happen when you believe you can make things happen you're able to achieve that stuff so if you said hey I want to get an ice cream cone 
an ice cream cone doesn't magically appear in your lap, but you you get you know you've had the experience. It tells you getting an ice cream cone is definitely possible. You know how to do it. You know how to um, go find a place that sells that thing and get it. And even if you don't have any money to get it, like. I'm going to switch my example to a donut because I was thinking of a donut this morning when I was thinking of what I wanted to say. Say a donut's a dollar and you don't have a dollar. Like, you say, well, sorry, I imagined myself getting a donut. I knew where to go get a donut, but I didn't have that dollar. You're also resourceful enough to think of ideas to get that dollar. Maybe go looking through your couch cushions. You find some change. If you can find it, you can go get it. So when you, when you believe that something is possible, you can think about it and you can put yourself in a position to make that happen and I believe that when you want to manifest things or attract things in your life um, it's it, it's kind of rooted into your beliefs of like is it possible and the more experience you have the more you believe it's possible so if you're my son's age three and I said do you want a donut you know if he wants a donut, he didn't know how to make it happen. Um, other than if mommy and daddy gave him a donut, he, he doesn't know how to get money and get to the store and get it because he doesn't have the experience yet. So his beliefs might be a little bit limited. So he can't be resourceful enough to get it. But over time, you get more resourceful, more experienced. Things that at one point were impossible become possible because you know what it takes to get there. Um, so that's why I believe in the law of attraction. And it's when you have an idea of what you want and you start putting yourself into scenarios that are more likely to achieve a positive outcome, um, your chances of attracting what you want into your life become more and more um, likely for it to occur. So I'm a big, big believer in putting yourself out, even, even if you don't know where you want to go, but you kind of have a general idea, like, I want to scuba dive, go into rock climbing classes, might not yield as more positive results than going to scuba diving lessons. When you start going to scuba diving lessons and you start meeting people that are also into scuba diving, and maybe one of those people uh, that's learning how to scuba dive knows somebody that has a boat that could take you scuba diving. So it's kind of putting yourself into scenarios putting yourself into positions where the likelihood of a positive outcome to occur is more likely to happen. So that's why when I wanted to get into startup space, I didn't know how to do it or what to do it. So I started just kind of reaching out to people that were in it. And I just figured, hey, if somebody invites me to some sort of mixer, I'm going to go there and I'll probably meet somebody. And that somebody will know somebody and it'll lead to me to more people and hopefully I'll get plugged in somehow to meet companies that want help with advising. So that's what I did. Oh, fuck. Dropping the camera because I'm sitting on the cord and I'm moving my ass. Um, so that's what I wanted to talk about with that. And then I, I read this book. I didn't read it. I was listening to it on an audiobook and I forgot the freaking name of it. Uh, but it's basically a physicist. And he was talking like a thermodyne no quantum physicist it was a quantum physicist and he was talking about um you know when they discovered the law of gravity and it was like hey all these rules apply you know if you you know all objects have an equal and opposite reaction to each other they're all attracting each other with your gravity blah 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 it all works it all works in these very very set rigid rules and we base a lot of our decisions about these known rules. But when you get down into the, like, the really infinitesimal scale, like atomic scale, or you get into like really, really big scale, like the universe and stars and shit, that stuff, all of a sudden, the laws of physics don't always obey each other. They, they, the law of gravity doesn't work. It, it, like There's opposite and there's anomalies and there's you know, complete contradictions to it. So it's really kind of like, hey, you know, the rules are the rules, except when they're not the rules. And we don't always live in a black and white world. 
um, so I don't know how this relates to my next talking point, which was, um, well, he was talking about it at the subatomic level, is basically when you get down to atoms and quarks and stuff below that, it just becomes energy. And at the very, very core, everything is some sort of energy, like, like at the atom level. And they're arranged in configurations that make things what we see today. So I like to think of it as like a TV. So a TV is a bunch of little lights shining at stuff. And they can be all kinds of different stuff and a bunch of random patterns and they don't make any sense. But they can be configured in a very specific pattern that can visualize a picture of something that we recognize maybe another person or people doing things or a car or something like that so that's pretty amazing that you can take this energy that's all over the place um and focus it into one thing so i'm probably out of order in my my transitions what i wanted to talk about because i was also going to talk about energy goes where the focus flows so that saying kind of comes from this quantum theory physicist theory where where it's like hey in in atomic world and i'm not very smart about this stuff so i'm probably making half this shit up there's little particles and they're in any they could be in any numerous places in more than one place at the same time you say well how, how is that possible well because think about it, they're all over the place but when you observe it when you put some focus on it that's where the energy goes so you can observe something in a time, in a space, in a place, moving because it's being observed. But when it's not being observed, it's all over the place. And that's kind of how, like, the TV analogy maybe helps explain it. It's like everything's everything until it's focused into something that's recognized, and then it's like, boom, that's what it is. So at its core, everything's energy, and if everything's energy, then you can learn to maybe observe it better. Um, so that kind of relates to putting yourself into places where the outcome's more likely to occur. So you start becoming more observant about your behaviors, about your decisions, about the people you associate with, about the places you go. And over time, those things pay off by putting yourself in, not just because you magically willed it to happen, but, you know, if you walk, you know, walk a mile every day, um, or you don't walk them out every day, you know, your, your chances, your likelihood of getting um, some sort of health benefit are, are going to be higher than doing than not doing. So expand that to everything you're kind of doing. Um, planting seeds. So this kind of leads me to, you know, I was talking about being a little bit upset about, you know, getting out of my comfort zone, doing more, which is essentially like planting seeds. And um, the, the, the seeds we plant today result in where we're at five years from now. So when you plant more seeds or cast a bigger net, you're... you're you're going to be really surprised at the end of five years where where that path took you. Um, not everything's going to come to fruition. Um, so that's why if you just try sometimes just one thing, you put all your eggs in one basket, not all the time does that take off. So you're trying a lot of stuff. You're kind of finding your space, your, your place, place in life where you want to go. And that ship has got a whole bunch of analogy so it kind of sounds stupid and cliche but you know you're on a path you're on a journey you're throwing seeds you're planting seeds you don't know what's going to take but things will take things will start appearing things will start making more sense you're more observant of the things you want to attract into your life so like it starts getting a little bit more focused and a little bit more narrow and then five years from now all of a sudden these things you were doing have paid off and you built a, a good base um thank you Thank you. Um, anyways, the last bit I wanted to talk about is corporate, the corporate ladder and the corporate culture, maybe the win at all cost um, scenario. So 
I was thinking about, there's a guy, famous CEO named Jack Welch. He was the CEO of GE. And he was um, pretty famous, known for, you know, really turning GE, General Electrics, around and becoming the, the company that it is. And then he groomed a lot of other people. Um, the guy that took over for him at GE and then some other guys that, like, went and ran Disney and Home Depot. I think Home Depot. Maybe maybe some other companies. But all, all big Fortune 500 companies. So he groomed a lot of people. But what I think... When, when he passed is like the, the days of ties you know I wear a tie I hate wearing a tie but the days of ties and corporate suits and climbing the corporate ladder and being cutthroat the win at all cost I think those days of business you know I'm not sure that that's sustainable I think um, I'm really excited about this book I'm going to read it's called Infinite Game and it's really about when when you have competition with each other, that's fine. You want to have competition with other competition because that's going to breed innovation. But when it's win at all costs, and that means that there's a clear winner, there's a clear loser, there's a clearly defined timetable that this thing's going to happen. So when you get to the end of the game, like a football game, like there's clearly a defined winner. But what would happen if you just continued to play the game infinitely and you were constantly challenging each other back and forth the excitement the, the back you know the, the building it up you're, you're you're competing but it's not a do or die situation um, where there's clear winners and losers and I think that 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 culture is kind of changing I think people are in competition with each other and I was thinking about it today because we were on a on, on some tours of some apartment projects and all these apartments were within a few miles of each other. They're all competitors with each other. They're all leased up. So then you think about it, and they call it, they call it oh, our competition, our competition. And you say, okay, well, yeah, you're, you're in competition. You do want to get the lease. You want that person to come in and get the lease from you, but not from the other person. But at the end of the day, the end of the day, what's really important is that there's three or four communities that are all providing housing for these people that want to live in the area they want to work in that area they want to um, do things so the big picture is everybody's helping each other by being in this community of win-win where everybody wins when everybody's leased up versus like a cutthroat culture of we got the lease and you didn't ha 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 like they ain't gonna do you any good if the other place across the street is half vacant because that's gonna make your property look bad so that's just kind of got me thinking a bit more about um this do or die win at all costs cutthroat um vertical hierarchy org chart type stuff and instead thinking more like the teams that you probably relate to are best is when it's collaborative people play their part um you know there's usually a leader but the leader might not always be the most senior or the most highest up on the food chain um in the company sometimes they are sometimes they're there to you know as a leader you're there to extract the best out of the team you're there to find what's in everybody and pull that out you're there to i like to call rain in you know, herd cats, keep everybody kind of on target, on focus on what the objective is. But that doesn't mean, um, you know, it's do or die, cutthroat. And then at the end of the day, when, when like GE, um, Jack Welch, he, he gets these people, he has like all these senior level, really good guys working for him. When we retire, somebody takes his place. So what happened to these other guys? They didn't stick around at GE. They all, you know, bailed and became CEOs at other companies. So, you know, when you have kind of this, like, cutthroat culture, you're also going to lose good talent because they're going to go elsewhere because, hey, they didn't get the, the, the role. They're going to go somewhere else where they can take on their next assignment, their next challenge, their next best. And I don't know. That's just kind of my thoughts of it. I just feel like... It was kind of like the passing of the old guard of business and suits and being important. 
<coughs> climbing the corporate ladder. Um, I don't know. What's your take? Do you think people are still climbing the corporate ladder? Or do you think it's more of a team and project based and maybe a little bit more collaborative? Um, lifting everybody up. Ships all ships rise with the tide. I like that one. Um, anyways, that's really it. What I got. I'm kind of getting dark in here. You can probably barely see my face. I got this new thing I ordered. Um, it's a little Bluetooth lapel. Um, microphone so I think my audio should start getting to be a little bit better so that'll be exciting I think that came in tonight uh, at the house so I should have that maybe tomorrow if I have time to get on chat with y'all um, so I'm gonna end it here I'm almost to the 57 I've probably been on I've been on here for about 20 minutes and I've gone about um, 16 feet I think I went 16 feet no I went a little further than that um, so, yeah, if you have questions, topics, ideas, you want to chit-chat, feel free to leave a message. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post this on, um, I'm going to save it. I figured out how to save it. I'm going to post it on IG Stories. I'm going to post it on YouTube um, and Facebook. So, any one of those places, if you have questions or comments about what I talked about or you want to get my take on something else, um, if you even want to ask why I'm doing it, I'll tell you why I'm doing it. I get better when I practice. I get better when I do more. And I'm not, I'm just driving home. I got not much else to do. So I figure why not? Why not be a little bit productive and get better at sharing my message and along the way? Hopefully, some people enjoy it. So that's what I got. Uh, talk to y'all soon. Take care.